Good morning. Guess you can tell where we are. But for those who don't know, we are in Prim, Nevada. I actually did not gamble last night. Pretty amazing. It wasn't like I couldn't. I could have. It's like 9 o'clock when I got there, so. But it was 10 o'clock my time, so I was a bit beat up a bit. This road is a bit rough. We're going to deal with the traffic going back to L.A., squeeze in now should have gone a little bit earlier but I slept in took my time in no hurry but it won't be too bad they don't let you over so you just have to force your way in Funny to watch him panic sometimes. There's the solar cells are up, fired up. Look at that one over there. It's like steam coming off of that. Those mirrors direct the sunlight to the center of that tower, which then creates steam and then it turns generators. Pretty ingenious, except for the birds. The light attracts insects. The insects attract birds. The birds get their wings fried. Another gorgeous day. It's 10.30 in the morning. 70 degrees. AC is cranked on. Chain laws are in effect. I-70 in Colorado. So it's snowing and they send us over here. But you'll have that sometimes. This wasn't that bad. When I went in to get my coffee, it was green. Now it's orange and red probably. time you get a little safety zone they fill it up she just go in their lane huh come on you guys wanted this lane A bit hazy out. I think it's from the wind. I think I'm going to take a couple days off. We're going to go to San Bernardino today and then back up to uh, Sandy, Utah. For a swap out tomorrow, and that'll about I'll have about one hour left out of my 70. 
on tomorrow, Monday, when I'm done. But I get I recoup hours on Tuesday. So that'll help get us through. But I might go take a look at those Cadillacs they have out there in Utah. It's the only place they really have them right now. Because we'll get up there swapped out. We won't have any hours, so we're just going to be killing time anyway. Time to get back over. I look way ahead. That's how I'm reading the road. I look way ahead and see what's going on, just like I do in the snow. You got to know, especially when you're in the snow. But so I might take go take a look, see at those. Probably take an Uber to a car rental and go drive around. It beats going from Denver or Grand Junction to Utah to look at them. Then I have a doctor's appointment on Friday, Thursday and Friday. My cardiologist and my primary care physician on Friday. Should have got them both the same day, but it didn't work out that way. But I'm, uh, I got to fix the wheel on my caddy, so I think that we're going to take an extra day off, three days. like looking into the sun. Yeah, I could have beat this traffic earlier. Could have left at seven. I woke up, ended up laying back down and out like a light. So I guess I needed it. So thing I like about this job, you know, some on those days when you don't have a delivery, you don't absolutely have to be there like 0700, 0600. A lot of times I plan my day on traffic and I did think about this traffic but I wasn't a whole lot worried about it because we're just catching the beginning of it it's gonna get a lot worse later on today it'll be purple from here to the from the scale house up here to the probably Gene Nevada I know on holidays it's like that This is where I run my high beams all day because you get people that cut in front of you because they see a spot and they're like, oh, I'm going to take it. And I use it for my cushion for safety zone and they want to take it and then they can look at the mirrors. The thing is pretty bright. deal with the tomato cops one thing some of you guys might know or not know if you're hauling in recyclable plastic to California it needs to be inspected here at the border any border the tomato cops 
They have to inspect it. Because if you don't, you go into sell or you go to the scrapyard, they're going to ask you for the paper from the inspection. If you don't have it, you have to go back to a border with the load to get it inspected. So, FYI, even if your company doesn't know it, and they tell you, well, don't worry about it. They're going to be glad that you did. And they're going to learn. Because these people were doing, I had this idea years and years ago. Of course, I never acted on it because I'm not a criminal. I have a criminal mind, but I don't act on it. Because why don't we take the recyclables from all over where you don't get charged? And bring them into California where you do get charged and get your money back. <laughs> that was what they were doing. And they were bringing in truckloads, semis. So now you have to have it inspected before you um, take it to the uh, recycler I should joke around what do you got all oh, plastic bottles empty plastic bottles no big deal <laughs> but I don't want them to no I'll pull over now we're going to look I don't want to do that so we're not going to do that empty pellets How you doing? Good morning. Empty pallets. You bet. I remember I used to sit outside and smoke. No more, no more. This December, I think, it's going to be five years. what kind of light we get. Bummer. No light. See you in a bit. Coming into Baker, California. We got lucky there at the scale house. I would have kept filming it, but the battery is getting real low. Um, there was two trucks in front of me. And they both got pulled into the scale for inspection. And they actually, in my lane, told the guy to go to Bay 3. The other guy was in the far right lane. And I don't know which bay he went into, but the guy in front of me, they said Bay 3, and it had a green arrow. So as he's turning, I'm going over the scale 
the light is green, the arrow's not there, but the sign still says Bay 3. And I'm like, I don't think that pertains to me because I didn't actually read it when he went through it because of the distance. But um, as I'm coming over, I'm like, well, I'm just going to dismiss this. They can come. If they have to come after me, then I'll tell them. I'm like, well, you, why didn't you put the arrow out? I thought it was for the guy in front of me because he was doing it. Anyway, just as I got closer, they took the sign down. So I, I tailed it out of there. I don't have nothing to worry about inspection. I don't care if I get one. The thing I don't like about it is being on duty time. I don't have a whole lot of time left right now. If they would have took an hour to do that, I would have been on duty the whole hour. But I have an hour window. So I don't want to. <laughs> I, I don't want to use any of my safety. Seventy seven degrees. You know, when I was up driving in the mountains full time, we'd come out to Vegas or California in April, and it was refreshing, so to speak, because you're up there in the snow all year. Well, it seemed like it was a year, <laughs> but all season. And then you come out here or go out to California, it's all nice and warm and dry, no snow and stuff. And it was just kind of refreshing, so to speak. So I got three motorcycles coming up on me. And they're still coming up. You do realize the lane's ending, guys. Wow. You know, you think if you're on a bike, you're going to be more apt to your surroundings, paying attention to them. We're going to hit traffic up here. We usually do. Usually it's going to be up on the left over here at like 11 o'clock, 10, 30, 11 around that bend over there. I don't know why. It's two lanes from here all the way to over there. It's not like we lose a lane which causes traffic to implode. Well, that temperature says 79 and I got 77. I don't know. Usually the Volvo's right. So I've seen a few Cadillacs out here today, but no V models. There's like a 2014 CTS V, or CTS. Probably got a V6 in it. It doesn't say anything on the back, so I can't tell. Those aren't bad lookers. I need to pull over and reset my truck.
cruise control went off. You get five miles an hour more with the cruise control on. But check engine light came on, so I'm hoping it'll reset itself. But if not, I have to pull over, turn the truck off, start it back up again. Then it'll reset it. I use that little extra power to get around other trucks quick enough so I don't hold up the line. See you in a bit. So here we are after that bend. We got the traffic. I drive this highway too often. <laughs> we should be good after this, traffic wise. Over here at Zizix Road. I always thought that would be a, a good license plate right there, Zizix Road. A lot of people would know exactly where you're at <laughs> or what it meant. This area right here. I'd never do that. I just always thought about it. Slow, slow, slow. The thing I don't like is these guys are freaking get up in here and then just do 60 miles and do like one or two miles an hour faster than the other guy. See, why didn't they look ahead like I did? I moved first. I already knew he was going slow. These guys wait till they get up on him. It's not how you drive. Well, maybe it's just me because I always like to keep my momentum going. So I always scan ahead, see what's going on. There's Ahab the Arab driving that truck from the desert to here like pipe insulation. Now I need to reset this truck. Just barely getting around these guys is not cut it for me. Anyway, we'll see you in a bit. Here's a rare site in California. <clears throat> Coming down Cajon Pass, on the 15 southbound. And it's actually clear. You can see clearly now. The smog is gone.
Definitely should have left earlier this morning. Remember that next time. We had pretty much traffic the whole way. But we're done with it for now. We'll go to our yard in San Bernardino. Drop this trailer off. We'll pick up a Harbor Freight load. Take it to Sandy, Utah. We have a total of 10 hours, 10 and a half hours available, and seven hours left today. Actually nine, but seven hours of driving. It's about 10 hours from San Bernardino to Sandy, Utah. I doing? I forgot this lane ends. A bit breezy out. I don't think it's the Santa Anas. They usually come from like the 10 o'clock position. But we're heavy and we're going to be heavy. So we don't have to worry about that. Downtown San Bernardino. Almost. Straight ahead of us. been this way in a long time. <clears throat> sunny and palm trees and probably in two days we'll be up in the snow.
nice and quiet down here for Sunday though. Sacombe Lake. <clears throat> Somebody had an accident right there in front of us. We just went over it. Looks like a homeless encampment there at the lake. <clears throat> Those people have walls around their houses <laughs> and businesses. Wonder why, huh? Beautiful day out here today though, <clears throat> 87 degrees. This yard is by the airport and it's right It's like not by the freeways anywhere. And every one of these houses has a wall or a fence around it. that thing off because we don't need it right now.
San Bernardino International Airport. I think Amazon bought it. We share this yard with other people. It's loaded, yeah. Mike? Mike? Just pallets. She's gonna throw a lock on it. It's like, you don't need to, that's why I told her just pallets. But I don't think she heard me. She's like, okay, pull up. Okie dokie. There's a lot more tractors down here than I thought. Our tractors, anyway. This is a lake right here when it rains. <laughs> Take the seatbelt off because we don't we don't need it anymore. Looks like a good spot right there. I think I'll take it.
too much too soon. spots to get into. So now we'll go pick up our Sandy Utah load. Bobtail over there. It'd be nice if it was here, we just turn around and split. But we gotta go deal with the traffic. Yeah, she's a bit rough. Hold on, little doggy. There we go. Wave goodbye to this gal. See you in a bit. Okay. We stopped at a rest area between Baker and Barstow. Northbound 15. I didn't finish, I didn't do any filming over there when I picked up this at Harbor Freight and then leaving just because the traffic is insane both directions. I don't know where everybody's going. Oh shoot. Forgot to do my Obama clock. Or did I already do it? not do it I pull over but there's nobody behind me so I ain't too worried about it okay there's a lot of people going north just like there is going southbound on the 15 here. That little Prius, he deserves what he got right there. He just cut in front of that truck. I was watching behind me. 
And he just ripped right in there. He's lucky he didn't cause an accident. Anyway, um, we're on our way to Sandy, Utah. Uh, picked up the load there, Harbor Freight. The guard, there was a guy in front of me. It was his first time there. Like, I told him where the scale was, when the scale is load out. And, uh, so the guard took care of him, and then he asked me, hang on a second, I got a phone call. Okay, so we're back. That was my dispatch. We'll hold on there. It's a little bit rough. That was my California dispatcher, Dan the Man. Um, it was really weird. They swapped my load. I was supposed to go do what we did and then pick up a Harbor Freight load and take it to Vegas. And then I don't know what was going to happen after that. I have a doctor's appointment on Thursday and another one on Friday. So I'm going to take a little bit of time off. But the cool thing is, they sent, he sent me to Sandy, Utah, which is Salt Lake City suburb, a little south of it actually. I'm going to be out of hours tomorrow. I've got just, I've got eight hours left. to get there and it's going to be like right at the time what I have available I can do 4 hours and 45 minutes today and the rest will finish off tomorrow it's a swap out so easy enough but I hate when those guys do that um It's just a swap out. So I got him call me and let him know that I need Monday, I need Thursday and Friday off. And actually I'm gonna try to take Wednesday as well to get a few things done. So um, that's why I had him call me when he had a chance. The cool thing is, though, that we're going to be done probably around noon tomorrow with nothing to do. Until I get my hours back Tuesday morning for recycled hours. But there's four Cadillacs in Salt Lake City area. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to Uber to a car rental agency and then go check out those Cadillacs. So I got nothing else to do. And I don't have to drive from Denver to do it or from Grand Junction to go do it on my own time. I, I'm going to have time. It's like, I believe everything happens for a reason in this world, in the universe. And... It just so happens, I think sometimes that that's, I honestly believe that that's how, how it works. If you, if you believe, then you can achieve. It's like, I, I'm a firm believer in that. And um, if you do, the universe will open the doors for you. Some people can say it's God opening the doors. Some people say it's the universe. You know, ask if you have a question, ask the universe, ask God, same thing, I guess. Um, the doors will be opened. So I don't know, it'll be interesting how this is turning out. I'm not quite ready to buy one. I'm not 100% sure I'm going to, but to be able to go look at them, check them out, maybe test drive them. Um, We'll see what happens. Anyway, it was a beautiful evening tonight. We'll end our video trip here. 
76 degrees. Um, I must have been in a bad spot because earlier there was so much traffic, it was insane. And now we're getting it again, but it was pretty mellow there for a little bit. You see what I mean? How they come in packs? Anyway, thanks again for riding shotgun, and until the next video, enjoy. Peace.